What you're looking at is uh, the LED video marquee in front of the Boston Convention Center. It's just a, less than a mile this way. And it's 80 feet tall. It has three sides, seven screens of varying resolution, and 2.8 million LEDs in it. It was built so that the convention center could um, give information about the conventions that are going on, uh, so they could sell advertising, and so they could do public service announcements. But what would art look like? This is Fall by Jeff Wormuth. Um, the convention authority had the vision to say, along with what we're going to use this for, we would like to see art on it. And they came to my organization, Boston Cyber Arts, and said, could you make this happen? And, um, and we said, of course. And to date, we've had um, two calls for entries calls for um, art. There are now 17 projects um, by uh, 14 artists. Um, this is a Psy by John Slepian. Um, and where our goal is to build a library of art for the uh, convention center to use in the future. Uh, this is Jump by Ellen Wetmore. Um, and all of the artists are Massachusetts artists because the Convention Center Authority is a um, state agency. Uh, this is City of Work by Michael Louie. Uh, and it's, in all my years of curating new media, I've never seen an object like this, and I've certainly never seen art on it. Um, this idea of art on urban screens is a worldwide phenomenon. Um, here's an example from New York. Uh, in, from the year 2000 to 2006, the art organization Creative Time worked with Panasonic to, in a project they called the 59th Minute, and they put art on this giant sign. This is um, Video Portraits by Thomas Struth. Um, it's all over the world. This is uh, the second largest um, video um, wall in all of Europe. It's in Bucharest. Uh, it's the Kakor Media Channel. They do advertisements. They do um, uh, all sorts of other information, but they put art on it. Uh, this is Electric Sheep by Scott Draves. This is the largest video sign in the world. It is bigger than a football field. It is in Seoul Square um, in Korea, and that's not the amazing part. The amazing part is that it's only used for art, no advertising. Uh, this is a piece by John, uh, uh, by Julius Opie. Um, Boston is a real leader in this. Um, this was the first um, video wall um, in Boston on the WGBH building. And you know, with public art comes uh, certain responsibilities. Um, and you can't do in public art what you could do in a gallery, for instance. And this had more responsibilities than other um, because it's actually right over the um, mass turnpike. So they had to kind of slow it down and use it a little bit for their um, own purposes. This is an antique road show. But there are more. Um, this is uh, owned by Emerson College. It's next to the Emerson Paramount Theater. And it's curated by um, a colleague of mine, Joseph Kettner. And he's done a number of projects with different artists. And the thing I find so interesting about this piece is that the LEDs are in the windows. It's not the whole wall, but you have to, as an artist, you have to think about people only see parts of what you're looking at at any one time. Um, this is a piece by John Powell. We have another piece. Um, it's at the Harbor Island Pavilion, uh, and, which is on the Greenway Conservancy. And it was um, built to share information about the Harbor Islands, how to get out there, what to see when you're there. During the day, it's open like this, and in the evening, it closes and it shows these two um, screens. There's one on the other building that you see off to the right there. Um, originally, they tried to show some video on it, but it didn't work because this has a real problem. 
uh, a fascinating problem, but a real problem. Even though they're 10 foot tall and about 12 feet wide, the resolution is only 48 by 64 pixels. Those of you who know how small that is, um, you said something, but if you don't know, there's a picture of me in 48 by 64 pixels on my screen on my computer, my laptop. Um, so we said we're, what we're going to do is we're going to get video artists who, uh, not video artists, but computer artists who would write code. And that code would be constantly changing, it would be never the same, and it would be abstract in nature. And we were introduced to the, to the people, the National Park Service and the um, Harbor Island um, uh, Coalition, and they said, this is great. We want to do this. But it's got to reflect the mission of the Harbor Islands. <laughs> and that threw us. until we started talking to them and found out that there is an incredible amount of data that is A, streaming consistently off of the Harbor Islands, and B, in 20-year databases of flora and fauna and temperatures and wind speed. All of this data information, which is exactly what algorithmic artists love to play with. It's called data visualization. And so the first artist is Ben Hogue. This is um, Cycles, Tides, and Seasons. Uh, and what he has done is take three different times and all put them into this relatively abstract piece. The first time is these closing and openings, and that's the time of the lighthouse um, lights that are on the Harbor Islands. The second time, you see these wavy things. That's the actual tide height. And the surface is the agitation, the wind speed, basically, of the tides. And the third are those little yellow dots. And those little yellow dots are the coloration of bees on the Harbor Islands taken from a Harvard database over an entire season. So, like it or not, and you probably won't, but I will, the future of the city is going to be to basically encase our architecture in these kind of large urban LED screens. And it's not just going to be architecture. It's going to be interior design. It's going to be fashion. Um, in the future, we will just have to decide what piece of media to download to our T-shirts <laughs> every morning. There's a new technology called Flexible, screens, and I suspect that in the future we will be getting our morning news from our coffee cups. So, what I, the message I want to present about this is that it will be used for advertising, it will be used for news, it will be used for other things, but it should also be used for art. This is the new public art. Not bronze statues of dead white guys or uh, plop, <laughs> static plop art, but dynamic, media art that will reflect the city and the time we live in and give the energy of the city back to us. Thank you.